What up, Laker Nation? You're here with your boy Kareem, aka 100 Likes. How you guys doing? Wow. I want to um, talk about Kwame Brown, right? Um, I've been defending Kwame Brown for the longest. Um, even his playing career, I was defending him when people used to uh, get down on him. Um, I seen an interview with him with, I mean, not an interview, but I saw him do a video, an uh, upload video of his, um, he's getting that Vlad. And um, it's crazy because I had a homeboy, this was like the very beginning of like right like a week after like the Matt Bond situation, like right around the time of the Breakfast Club, me and my homeboy was uh, arguing, and I just defended Kwame then, and was like, you know, defending him. And my homeboy said back then, he said, "Yo, I'm telling you, man, that dude is clout chasing. He doing this to get on. Watch he switch. Yo, he everything he said is coming to light right now, and." And and Kwame definitely cloud chasing. It's like he 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 talked about being internet bully. Talked about how Stephen A. Smith. The only person I feel right now he should continue getting that is Stephen A. Smith because Stephen A. Smith his whole career always just brought him up for random reasons. Everyone else he asked for apologies from um different people. Charlemagne, different people said apology. You said you people need to be a man apologize they apologize you still was going that guys and right now i feel you he he internet bully he internet bullying and uh and what i don't like when the thing first jumped off with the gilbert arenas matt bonds and stephen jackson jumped off gilbert arenas called him the same day called him apologized to him said listen i don't want no problems with you gilbert was teammates with this man he said, I don't want no problems with you. He apologized. Boom. It was over with. I've seen the Vlad TV interview with Kwame Brown. I mean, the Vlad um, and Gilbert Arenas interview. I've seen it. And to me, Vlad ain't say nothing wrong. All Vlad said was um, Kwame Brown didn't live up to expectations of a number one pick, which he didn't. I don't see where Vlad went went say anything out of pocket to him he and it's the truth he didn't as a number one pick and Kwame not the only one for us a number one pick he ain't say he a bust he ain't say he a bum he said he didn't live up to expectation as a number one pick you could be a number one pick and still be a good player but you ain't live up to a expectation as a number one pick like Andrew Wiggins Andrew Wiggins is is, is a good NBA player he averages, he, he you know, averaged 20, I think, a couple times in his career. He been solid, but he didn't live up to the hype of being a number one pick. Um, Joe Smith, the same way. Um, Markel Folks, um, Greg Oden, because of injuries. Um, Bayani, Andrew Bogut, uh, Michael Oliver Candy, it was a, and, um, Anthony Bennett. There's a lot of guys that didn't live up to expectation of a number one pick an expectation of a number one pick is guys who make a few or you don't have to to me i don't look at you have to be no hall of fame player but you have to at least be an impact player and and make at least four to five all-stars and have a, a real good i mean real good nba andrew wiggins to me is like the best on the list he's a good player he put up good numbers he, he now he's becoming to like a solid role player but he didn't live up to expectation of the number one pick. So with that being said, I don't see why Kwame would take a, a, a slap at what Vlad said. Now, forget what Vlad said. You go at Gilbert Arenas, and Gilbert Arenas was, to me, being super nice. He said if they were to redo a draft, he said if they were to redo the draft, he said um, Kwame will be the third pick. He said behind Gasol and um, Zach Randolph. And then he said Kwame. And he even put himself, he said Tony Parker would probably be like five or six, something like that. He even put himself behind you. And then you'll say, I don't know if he feel away for being, not being happy where he got picked at. Him being picked the second round benefited him. It, it, he, he able to get more money by being picked in the second round instead of being locked in to like a, a five-year contract.
he was locked in a one year deal. He was able to hit free agency early and he cashed out. It benefited him a lot. So Kwame, you you right now, you really, you really seem like you're becoming a, a cloud chaser. And then you sit there and say, how he next time he run around doing these interviews, he need to come speak to you first and, and get the story. You don't know the real what is real deal about it. He didn't go into your life story. He said nothing about your life story. He's kept it strictly basketball. He said, I think Kwame be, still be the third pick because he's a center. And big men, back then, they prioritized big men back then. I still think he'd be a third pick. He gave you your props. He, he said, Gasol be one, Zach Randolph would be two. Like, what do you want from this man? And then you really putting yourself in a bad situation because now you're going to put yourself in situation where you can't even talk about basketball because the minute you talk about basketball and you critique any one game how, how you gonna do that after you you seem real super sensitive right now you always talk this a man be a man is a man you talk that man but you basically nobody can't say your name without you getting at him gilbert arenas was teammates with you he got some insight of and some perspective, how you was as a player, how you was as a person, the same way you got some insight of him. You know, matter if you feel is right or wrong, or matter he will feel right or wrong, your perception of him, but he has a perception. He has a legitimate perception of you. Y'all was teammates for a few years. He has a legitimate perception of you, no matter if you feel is right or wrong. And that's just what it is. You can't get mad every time someone says something about you. You must feel you're a bus. You got to feel your bus. Vlad said, didn't say anything wrong. All he said was he didn't live up. Even if it was a little sneak, this so what? Vlad don't owe you nothing. Even if it was. But at the end of the day, it's not like he lied on you or he said anything disrespectful. All he said was he didn't live up to the expectation of a number one pick, which you didn't. No matter you played 14 minutes, no matter whatever the reason it was. You still didn't live up to the expectation of the number one pick. The same thing like um, Greg Olden. Greg Olden got a lot of injuries. But at the end of the day, he still didn't live up to the expectation of a number one pick. The same thing if you were to say someone like a, um, a Derrick Rose. If Let's say Derrick Rose don't make Hall of Fame. He didn't make the Hall of Fame. Yeah, because of injuries. But the bottom line, he didn't make the Hall of Fame. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. If injuries uh, got in the way of a player, it's bad. It's messed up that it happened. But at the end of the day, you can't. You could say coulda, shoulda, woulda. But at the end of the day, if you write in a book, he's not a Hall of Famer. If I'm had to vote for Hall of Fame, I would not put Derrick Rose in the Hall of Fame. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people wouldn't put Derrick Rose in the Hall of Fame. That's just what it is. He got hit by injuries, but that just, hey, that that's what happened. And you put yourself and you make it, you make it, you make yourself in a bad spot where you, you really can't. And you, I think he said something about he would love to do a podcast and talk sports. He need to get up there and talk sports. How are you going to possibly talk sports without criticizing someone? You pretty much going to have to criticize someone. You, you pretty much have to do it. It, 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 it just what it is. A player going to have a bad game. So you're going to have to say what it is. You got to call it how I see it. Some players just not that good. Some players getting tons of money, not worth that money. And you may have to mention it. So so my point is you really becoming a cloud chaser and you seem as super sensitive. You got and you're going to turn a lot of people against you. So I hope that you see this video and I hope you take heed to it and stop being like that. And I think you owe Gilbert Arenas apology. I think you should call that man. You always talk about being a man and a man this, a man that. These guys got minimum ways. I think you should call that man and apologize to him. I, I'm not saying Vlad. You, you don't have no relationship with Vlad. You owe it to Gilbert to call him and apologize because you made a video and and... You, you look crazy saying it. You look crazy. And he didn't say anything wrong. And like I said, you're going to end up, you 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 popping right now, but a lot of people are going to turn against you. And and the guys that support you, who you shout out, they never going to tell you. Ticket TV ain't going to be a man and, and say, oh, Kwame, you dead wrong about Gilbert. Carcino ain't going to say you wrong about Gilbert. They ain't going to say nothing. You know, 
So that's just what it is. It's about you want to talk about being a man. That's what it. That's what it got to be. You can't can't. It's no two ways about it. It's it's, it's one way. You gonna be this. You gonna talk that man stuff. All that man and and this and that and all the stuff you talk. Look what you're doing. Look what you're doing. You out of pocket right now. You totally out of pocket. I don't like it because I defended you. I like you. And it's not that I don't like you. I still like you. But now you you coming off as being like a clown and you coming off of being like a clout chaser. Like you, it seemed like you chasing it. You know, you got to be consistent in who you are as a man. You know, and, and like I said, you put it, why somebody got to do an interview, got to say, got to ask you or get some type of perspective on you about anything? Why? If, a, if you if I interview you or if anybody interview you and ask you about a player and you give your analysis of how it is, how are you wrong by saying what you see? I just saw you did a video talk about the Laker team. They not a team. They not this. They not that. I, I seen you you say that you could get twenty and ten against the Lakers. You saying little slick shit about them? Like come on, don't don't do that. You break it down the game. You got a right to do that. You feel you get 20 and 10, okay, cool. Against the Lakers. They not a team, they not this, they not that. The bigs don't know, but you you don't have it don't matter if you say the names. Everybody know who you basically talking about. Don't do that, man. If you want to be a man, the same way Gilbert called you and said, yo, he want no problems with you. He ain't mean it like that. You should call him and say you apologize to him that he didn't say nothing wrong. Cause you sound like a little girl right now. Like a little girl, so when somebody mentioned your name, you're going to sit there and say something. You out of pocket. Like, subscribe, peace.